Hey everyone, I'm Norn Queen Alexis and welcome back to the channel and welcome to my reaction video that is long since overdue, my reaction to the Astartes series. Now, everyone, I'm not kidding, everyone of you, of you out there have asked me to do this. Uh, originally I didn't because it seemed like it was too short. It's extremely good, by the way. I've seen a few parts of it. I haven't seen all of it. I think I've seen part one. Um, but I'm going to give you my reaction to it going through this and really just take a look at it. So reaction, let's do this. So little bit of a disclaimer, I have seen part of this and I'm a little bit spoiled by other animations as well. So I'm really, I have high expectations for this. Um, yeah, it's got 3.5 million views, so it's gotta be good. The second version, the first version actually did too and then they got into some hiccup with somebody stealing their channel. YouTube not doing anything to fix it. So, let's dive into this. Starties. All right, I'm going to try to keep it so that I can actually see this. It's got an Imperial class ship. Now that's a frigate for the ultra for the standard marines. Ooh. I do like how the marines are moving. Blessing their weapons. Space Marines still feel like they're tough and powerful, like they're stomping everywhere. I want to say that's a sword class frigate that they're in. Alright, so quite a bit to look at in this, so let's go through it really quickly. Look, there's my video. You guys should watch that. You can also see some of the recommendations that I have, like Celtic music. So I'm pretty sure this is a Space Marine frigate uh, class. Oh, oh my God, I know the ships. Why am I drawing a blank at this of all things? Also, my green screen is freaking out. I am sorry, I, can't, I tried to fix it. I wanna say that's a, let's go like this real quick. Let me pull this off to the side really quickly. Um. Let me just try to get a spaceship list for them. I'm pretty sure that's a sword. I just want to make sure I'm positive. Or is it a strike cruiser? It might be a strike cruiser. No, it doesn't have the front of a strike cruiser. It's too small for that. Um, let's... Let's go with Battlefleet, see if I could find it really quickly on a lexiconum. There we go. All right. So let's bring this up here and let's go through here. What we're looking for is a ship that matches it. And I want to say it's within this class, uh, not cruisers, but smaller class ships. It's not a Nova. Be a f no, I feel like it's a cobra. Could be a cobra. Yeah, it's a cobra. I knew I recognized that ship. Okay. So we got a cobra ship. That's pretty nice. And then... One of the cool things right here is you see the Imperial Navy personnel aboard the ship. A lot of people don't know that there's a lot of humans attached to Space Marine armies. Like in lore, there's entire battalions of soldiers dedicated to following around space marines. Uh, they usually have the same name as, well, their masters. So it's kind of amusing that you can actually run into... My green screen is freaking out. It's kind of interesting that you can run into Navy personnel that are called ultramarines. And they're just humans, not space marines. It's kind of interesting. Um... Okay, so we actually do have this really cool animation of them not looking at the Astartes because these are angels after all. Normal humans don't really look at angels, just saying. 
And it's cool that the Space Marines just move and they get out of their way. The Space Marines feel like they're big and in charge, not some smaller thing. Like uh, Eternal Crusade had the problem with making Space Marines feel like just your average person. So here we have the Hololithic display, which shows a bunch of satellites around the planet. This is pretty accurate. And it shows, I don't know what this is, possibly a space station, possibly their ship. A bunch of different landing zones. Over here in the background, we actually get to see it looks like the commander of the vessel itself, or at least somebody that's important, maybe a captain of some sort. Uh, another thing that a lot of people don't know, space marines are usually not the captains of their own ships. Um, I know, it's weird, right? The fourth or fifth company is the master of the fleet and the fleet does have to answer to them but there's humans in charge of it the most uh, famous example of this is latara saron of um angron's fleet from 30k and let's see if there was anything else space marine sitting they look all cute like look at you these look like little balls like they're in the fetal position that's adorable I know this is a custom chapter that the guys that made this, um, it's their custom chapter. And then we got them blessing the bolters and everything. So it's cool to see that they work closely with the Inquisition for the Inquisitorial Eye here. The Rosette, it signs them as a religious organization of, of Space Marines. So that's kind of neat. Uh, I really like that. I love religious Space Marine chapters. There's a few notable exceptions that are not religious, like the Ultramarines are not religious. My green screen is literally bugging out and it's it's actually getting on my nerves. Let's see if I can fix this. There we go. Okay. Sorry about that. But the Golden Aquella is actually a sign of the Imperial Faith. So cool little details like that I absolutely love. Shows them getting ready to either board a drop pod or a drop ship. This kind of looks like a drop ship versus the actual pod. Here we get to see their insignia on the shoulder. Uh, this is a custom chapter, by the way. This is not a standard chapter. This to me looks like they're taking a Serastus down to the planet itself. Um, probably not a, maybe a Thunderhawk, but it feels a little bit small. That might be a Thunderhawk. But the squared front just, it, I think it might be a Serastus. So, that was pretty neat. Let's take a look at the second one. Oh, right there. We have a, a Thunderbolt fighter. Uh, one of the few uh, spaceships in the Imperial Navy, actually a lot of the interceptors, and uh, dogfighters that are void capable. Uh, Valkyries can make uh, atmospheric drops, but they're not that safe in, um, in open void. So it's interesting to actually see, um, see this here, escorting the space marine vessel down, because that's exactly what the military would do. I definitely want to say this is a Serastus. Then we got two drones next to this thing. A lot of people don't realize there's a lot of drones in the space marine and the armies of the Imperium. Uh, a famous example of this is in the Garrow audiobooks or audio dramas where um, he gets held up before getting to Terra um, and drones are checking his ship to make sure it's safe. And then he gets quarantined. <clears throat> before the Imperial Fist board, and then he tells Rogel Dorn, hey, your brother betrayed you, and Rogel Dorn's like, no, he didn't. And he's just like, Rogel Dorn, shut the hell up. You're not important. You're literally like the biggest mm, Primarch. Like, you're, you're literally just the slapping boy of Primarchs. So. Looks like the front mounted, yeah, this definitely looks like a Serastus. I, I want to say that. Um, so let me drag this over here again. And I'm going to try to show you what I'm talking about. If I can spell, that would be terrific. I think it's called the Assault Boat. Or Assault Ram. 
Hmm. Okay, I know it's in 40k, and it's the it's an aircraft. Oh, it's always hard to find these things on the site. The site is all over the place. Armies of the Imperium. Uh, I don't want to search all. Is there just battlefield roll? Uh, flyers. This would be much easier. See, it doesn't feel like a thunder, uh, storm eagle or a uh, raptor to me. Uh, there's the thing. It's a thunderbolt that's ex escorting it. It's not the greatest aircraft in all of 40k, the Arvis Lighter. Did they actually remove the aircraft? Wow, I think they removed it. Huh. I'll be damned. Hmm. They did remove it. Uh, let me see if I can find it online. Or is it a Calidus? Oh, it's definite. Yeah, here it is. Uh, let me try to find a picture of it. Or find it on the Lexiconum, since I trust the Lexiconum. Now, this is what I'm talking about. This is what it feels like that they are flying in right now. And the reason it feels like this is because this thing actually does have a weapon in the middle of it designed for ramming through spaceships and everything. So this is what I think they're they're looking at. Or at least a part of. Yep. And it's got the magma cutters and everything. So yeah, I do believe that that is uh, this. So at the front of this craft, if we can get a picture of it. Now keep in mind, I may be wrong. It does have that exact... Thing, and it is meant for boring into uh, vehicles and everything, uh, into spaceships, space hulks, and <clears throat> other small frigates. <clears throat> I can talk, I promise. It might also be that they're in a, an assault claw, and I might be completely wrong. <clears throat> All right, let's watch that scene again, okay? First off, let's see this. Burrowing through with the magma, uh, I think it's called a magma cutter. But I want you guys to notice one thing about this. The Space Marines barely waste shots. Uh, this is something that's actually true in the lore too. Like that's their equivalent of suppressing fire. But if you notice, First off, that is exactly how a bolter would hit somebody. It hits them and they just tear in half. It is absolutely incredible. Like, it hits them, the force of the impact hits them, and then they just blow up. Like, it's crazy. Uh, the whole arm exploding, this guy just exploding is perfect. Also, it's cool to see auto guns. And all of these guys just drop dead. Space Marines don't even care. Now... Funny thing, a lot of people are going to are gonna give me flack for this because they don't think LAS guns or auto guns can go through the Space Marine's armor. The Space Marine's armor is very, very, very impressive, but it's not impenetrable. It can be penetrated by enough auto gun shots, enough LAS, cannon, enough LAS gun shots, and eventually will be crippled and destroyed, especially if shot in the same spot multiple, multiple, multiple times. But, as you can see, Space Marines are more than well-equipped to deal with whatever's shooting at them. Mostly because the inside of their helmets have a way of scanning everything that they see. Uh, you can actually see this in the Dawn of War Dark Crusade game, where it goes across, the Auspex goes across, shows them every single um, enemy, reveals them all, and then the gun automatically aims based on where the Space Marine is seeing, and where his threat senses are telling him to shoot, the gun will auto-aim, auto-level, and fire at every single target and destroy it. 
this is this is just space marine lore like they are pretty tough to deal with but they're not invincible so that's the second part of astartes let's move on to the third part so it looks like we got the commanders and everything the disciplinarians looks kind of like alpha legionnaires Again, Space Marines moving, they don't feel, they don't feel heavy enough in this scene. Um, I would rather hear more stomping, unless they had like the Mark V Corvus armor, which does have stealth implements inside it. But again, this could be the guy's custom chapter. His custom fluff might be that these are a stealth class of Space Marines. Uh, that is a thing, by the way. The Corvus armor can actually suppress all of the noise it makes and temporarily make itself invisible. Just goes in, three shots, blows everything away. We got an auto gun beam shot. Or an auto cannon, my bad. So trying to ambush, this is really cool. This is something that the Space Marines Auspecs would eventually pick up because they're even though they're barely moving an auspex can pick that up can pick up life signs can pick up heartbeats although that guy has terrible aim but it looks like he was just trying to do suppressing fire and then he got them rolling in the last cannons or is that a maybe a twin auto cannon Love it. Love it. Again, another guy just gets blown in half. Space Marines barely using up any ammunition. Oh, it's a multi-laser. So this, I, I think, is a little bit inaccurate. Uh, a multi-laser would eventually burrow through and start burning through the armor of the Ceramite. Now, granted, Ceramite can handle re-entry temperatures, so easily above 16,000 degrees. But at the same time, that's still a laser being shot at him. It's not that accurate, but it's still being shot directly at him. And there's little damage to the Marine. Actually, there's quite a bit of damage to the Marine looking at this now. Never mind, this is actually showing pretty accurate onto the Marine, where it's really damaging him and burrowing into his armor. So, my mistake. And again, on his armor here, and then he throws a blind grenade, it looks like, or some type of smoke grenade. But it doesn't look like a... Yeah, it looks like more of a blind grenade, which is essentially a flashbang. A plasma gun or plasma pistol overcharge versus a heavy weapon team is two damage. And that's going to kill him. 12 inch range. Got him. So it's cool to see that this guy is accurate on a lot of the lore. It does show that the last gun or the last blasts are burrowing through the armor. So I did like that. And now we're up to part four. Okay. And here we see the two psychers. Now they are surprisingly big. I want to know, um, so I think this is a neurosphere. I think that's what it's called. Or it's an MIU of some sort. Or it's just something amplifying their psychic powers. So this is something interesting on the back of the bolter, it telling you the ammunition. I've never seen anything like that in the lore, but it's not out of the question uh, for something like that to exist. Uh, in fact, I actually thought that that would be a great addition to my bolter. So I like it, but it kind of feels like Halo. Also, I think something cool is here. Yeah, you can see the burn marks from the last, uh, the, um, 
the the twin um multi-laser thank you brain because i want to call it a las laser which doesn't make any sense i don't know why it's not just called a multi-las also they did reload their guns which is amazing and they went to full first this is just a psychic barrier this isn't anything really impressive this is something that all psychers pretty much get access to Or it could be some type of regular force field, but it feels more like it's psychic in nature. And they're just full... Oh my god. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That guy just running is really funny. Um, so, so one thing I do want to point out. If you're in a cosplay of a space marine, you can't actually do that motion. You, you simply can't. Uh, the only way you can do that is if the... Um, if you put a ball joint where the shoulder pad connects that allows you to do that and you have another hook to the arm itself so that way it doesn't swing like crazy. So I expected Naruto running but this is fine. So the sergeant's running up and he's getting ready to cast smite or some type of force push. I don't know why he discarded the plasma. And he went for his bolt pistol, which is strange. So, I do want to point this out too. This may seem like this psyker is insanely powerful. Uh, this is a weak psyker. That's how scary psykers are in 40k. This is probably like a level 3 or level 4 psyker. Pretty powerful, not gonna lie. Fairly powerful. But... This is standard for psychers. A uh, good example of this is in, um, not Mark of Faith, uh, Requiem Inferno, I think they fight a psyker. Or any of the Battle Sister books where they fight psychers. They get insanely powerful. So he waited for the force field to fail. I know the name of this psychic power too, and it's really bugging me. It's not telekinetic grasp, it's something else. Ooh, nice kill. And kills both of them. They should confirm the deaths of them, by the way. Like, I'm not going to lie, they should probably crush their head and, and make sure they're dead. Psychers are very tough to kill. All right. So, yeah. Psychers in 40k are problems for the entire planet. Not just the problem for the, the one little psyker. They actually become very, very, very dangerous very quickly. And they're insane. And a psyker that accidentally pushes too much or can't control might actually start a demon incursion so they're dangerous all right and part five okay it has a bit of a recap all righty good recap huh that's imperial navy Okay. I do love this. I do love the hololiths and everything up there. That's amazing. Look at all the purity seals everywhere. I love it. It's a very religious chapter, which I think is really cool. Or, in this case, that was a heretical shrines and everything, if this is the core of the enemy ship that they're on. Inquisition. Auto Hereticus, it looks like. I think three barred eye is Auto Hereticus. It's not Auto Xenos. And I don't think it's Malleus. I think it's time for me to check that. I, I, I need to check that. I think it's. Uh. 
Okay, let's, uh, whoops, that's the wiki. I hate the wiki. I would rather the lexiconum. I'm looking for the sigil of the Inquisition. I want to say the three barred eye is Hereticus. Why do I want to say it's Hereticus? I'm pretty sure it's Hereticus. I think that's what I have on my sororitas. It might be Malleus, though. Oh, that's that's bugging me. That's bugging me a lot. All right, let me see this again. All right, get to that. Get to that. Uh, either Inquisition or Inquisitorial acolyte. Okay. Um, is there a symbol somewhere that I can look at? Yeah, you know, Victor would be able to tell me this in a second, and it's really bugging me. There we go. Okay, so do they actually have the mark though? Okay. Accidentally opened Automalius twice. I think it's the three barred eye for. No, because it's the ten pointed star for Hereticus, isn't it? I want to say it's a ten pointed star for Hereticus. Let me see. I gotta look this up real quick. This is bugging me. And I'll show you guys once I find it. I wanna say... It might just be... Okay, or my computer can go super slow. That's cool too. Okay, it's definitely not Auto Xenos. We know that. Yeah, it's Auto Hereticus. Okay. Perfect, because you can see it on uh, Karamazov's uh, Throne of Judgment. See the three barb there. And if we go back, we go back again. We could see it on her hat, as well as in this picture. I saw it just a second ago. But it is the Otto Hereticus that has the three barb, and Otto Malleus has the f uh, a different one. Okay, let's go back to this. Sorry, I'm a nerd when it comes to the Inquisition. Hey, that one is in Corvus armor. Nice. Also, that looks like a captain or a lieutenant. That would be a small craft for them to travel on, though. Oh, nice. With the eyes there constantly scanning. I love that. Because the Space Marines don't actually see out of the side, by the way. Let's, uh, let's make this big. Do love the eyes constantly scanning. Well, that was certainly something. Some type of imperial statue of some sort. Oh, oh. I could turn the slight down just a bit. The ship's got balls. I still love that there's still markings all over his armor. Astartes. Some type of explosive. 
close about it. exactly what you should have done in that situation but it's interesting to see an agent of the inquisition just got possessed <laughs> and level stuff. service studs that's cool so the gold one is a hundred years and the two silver ones are i think 50 years so this guy's been serving for 200 years or the gold one is for making sergeant i can never remember that see he's got his close combat weapon a bolt pistol no hand he lost his plasma pistol and that is some spooky stuff i love it that is so cool. Is that where we're ending? Oh. I'm liking what I'm seeing. Not very much talking, but a good story being built up. Very nice. That is super cool. So, I doubt the next part will be out for quite some time. Here's two videos that people really want me to respond to. Um, by the way, I love Russian Badger. He's one of my favorite YouTubers. I gotta say it. I think that this was absolutely fantastic. It was... It was just really cool. That ending was really cool, too, because it showed a bunch of different chapters. Was that Celestial Lions, though? No, it wasn't. 
Looks like another homebrew. I may be wrong on that. Let me see that, that last little bit. Or as they flash the different chapters and everything. I want to see what chapters it was. I want to see what chapters it was. So it looks like Blood Angels, his chapter, Blood Angels, uh, oh my god, these look like um, those raptor guys that have the bones growing out of them. I cannot remember what they're called. They're Corvus's uh, successor chapter. I don't know what it's, I don't know what this chapter is, but it's like but they are fighting Kaldar, which is really, really tight. Hang on, let's see if we can rewind that just a tiny, 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 tiny bit. Yeah, that's definitely Eldar weaponry. That's, that's Eldar weaponry. That's amazing. That is so cool. I love it. I love it. I can't wait to see more from this. Um, guys... You've already seen this, but if you haven't, go subscribe to their channel. Go check them out. They're amazing. <clears throat> I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, comment in the comment section down below. Tell me what your favorite part was. Uh, personally, I really like those psychers, though I wish they were explained just a little bit more. Uh, I do wish that they got a little bit more screen time to do psyker stuff. But overall, again, amazing work, you guys. Just want to say it. Yeah, so support this channel, support my channel, check out my Patreon. As always, I'm Norn Queen Alexis. I love you guys. Bye.